Welcome back everyone, I'm Falonir and I have some amazing news for you. Sammy is finally released and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Now the install for this should be really easy if you're on the community edition of Lear on Board 2. All you have to do is click check updates and you can update directly to Sammy, no problem. However, if you're not on the community edition or you're downloading it for the first time, the step-by-step -step process is just a little bit different. Now all you need to do is go down to the description below, click the link, and download Sammy if you have not downloaded the community edition of the program. There's a little bit of a step-by-step -step process you have to go through, which is detailed there, and I'll have a video up on that here, hopefully very, very soon. In the meantime, let's go over to my other video where I show you patch notes and some new changes that have been added that might be really interesting to you. So take it away, Falonir from a different day. All right, so now that we've gone through the install process, let's talk about some of the changes that come along with Sammy. Now, there are a lot of changes. In fact, if we pull down our patch notes, this entire thing are all of the changes, ads, adjustments, improvements, whole nine yards. There is a ton of stuff in here. I will not have enough time in this one video to cover everything. In fact, it may take multiple videos to go in depth on everything that's been added in. So I will do my best to cover a multitude of topics in this video, and then we'll continue this uh, in further videos. But I highly recommend after you install, go into your Sammy folder. I still have it LB2. I've got to rename everything and go to patchnotes.txt, and that will show you all the patch notes for the release for Sammy. Go through there, take a look at everything that's been added in, find some of the new commands that are there, some hotkeys, and just dig through and see what you can find. In the meantime, let's get started on some of the features that I specifically want to highlight in this video. Now, first thing we want to take a look at are hotkeys. Now, before pressing tab, which I have the program highlighted, uh, pressing tab would open the variable viewer and now this would work on the main screen here and when you're inside a specific button however that's now been changed so it's now control tab and it pulls up the variable viewer but we can also control tab index and do the same thing but we can even go one step further and go inside a button let's change this to Hello. There's, there's no way I could have possibly had to record this video multiple times and have you know previous work from other things that we were doing. But now we have test var is hello world. If we open the variable viewer from here, it goes specifically into the button that we're in and looks at the variables inside that absolutely beautiful update. Thank you so much. Now I don't have to dig through like five different layers to get to the variables for a button that I'm working on. And we're not talking, we're not done talking about hotkeys, but while we're inside this button, I wanna talk about this. Um, you also see we have some new buttons here. So save and close would take us back to the deck menu like we knew before, but now we have a save button. So if I press this, it will save that button and all the commands that I've changed in it without closing us out of it. And we have a run button command and I love this button now Pressing this button will save all the commands that we've done for this button and then execute them. So we don't have to have chat commands that will pull up um, or that will process a button so we can test to see if something works. We don't have to open the stream deck to then test there as well. We can just use this. So inside our variable viewer, we don't have any variables that are currently stored in this button. But if I run this and then check the variable viewer, boom. Test var, hello world, absolutely fantastic. And we also have some additions here as well. I will pull out the Twitch chat because we will need this. So not only can we delete it, we have two different things that we can copy from this variable. The first one here is the contents of the variable. So hello world, if we copy this, control V will paste hello world. So the contents of that variable you can put into your clipboard. The second one is the... <laughs> Hi, Wolby. Uh, the second one is the pathing to this variable, which for us would be id223.testvar. Now that we've copied that. So now if we need to pull this variable up in a different button, 
we can just copy this. It'll give us the full path to this variable. We can put it in a different button and immediately know that we're referencing this, which is containing hello world. Awesome additional feature that I hope you can get some use out of. Now, a little bit more to do with hotkeys. So we now have um, a way to identify which cell that you're looking in. And this is important because if we're in this cell, which is now red, before I needed to right click and copy button to copy it, right click to paste to paste it, and then right click delete to delete it. However, if we highlight this button, control C to copy it, it says button copied, go to a new cell, control V to paste it. We now have a paste. And then with that cell selected, delete to delete it. Now let's say you deleted one that you shouldn't have. Control Z brings it right back. So that triggers the undo button up here, but via hotkey. And let's say you wanted to redo, Control Y does the redo for it. So features that we already had, but now we have hotkeys that can let us go through that process as well. So if you're used to using hotkeys, this is gonna speed up your workflow process a lot. So thank you for those uh, additional hotkeys that you've given us. Now, let's go into this button and check out some little features uh, that we have here. So we have test var, which is currently showing hello world. Let's say I wanted to add that variable to a chat message. We're gonna send it to Falonier's chat. What I would normally have to do here is we would need to wrap our variables in our backslashes and dollar signs to let the program know that we're using the contents of the variable, not the string of characters that the variable is referred to as. So instead of sending test var to chat, which we would do right here, test var, run button, we send test var. However, if we wrap it instead, backslash dollar sign, you'll notice here that there is an autocomplete feature for variable wrapping. So if we type backslash dollar sign, it will finish with dollar sign backslash and put our cursor back in the middle of it. So now all we have to do is test var, which is super awesome. And now we have the message going hello world. This wrapping, if you, let's say we put a word in here and then realize that we still need to wrap it, we haven't wrapped it yet, backslash dollar sign will not autocomplete that wrapping. If it sees a character directly to the right, it will not do the autocomplete. Now, if we have some spaces and then we come back, backslash dollar sign, it sees that there's an empty space to the right, so it's going to continue that autocomplete feature. Um, so just be aware of this when you are going through your projects and um, setting variables in different locations and wrapping them when you need to, that the autocomplete feature is going to autocomplete. Uh, now you can turn this off if we just save, save and go to our settings. Uh, we have the automatically close variable wrapping. Uh, if you undo this, it will work as it worked before and you will have to manually type everything out. Um, but looking in here, we also see auto restart semi after crash. Let's take a look at that one. So let's go back in here and instead of doing hello world, what we're going to do is we're going to take two and divide it. This somehow looks familiar, doesn't it? Let's say we take the number two and we divide it by the string hello world. Now, for those of you in class that know <laughs> what happens when you try to divide a number by a string is it won't work. And in Sammy's case, it will actually crash the program. So let's take a look at that. All right, so now we have our fatal error, unable to convert hello world to a number because that's what it would need to be to then be divided into two. Um, if we hit yes, it'll copy the error to our clipboard. If we hit no, it won't, but you can always get back to that error log file. So we're gonna hit no and it crashed the program. And then it immediately brings the program right back up again. An absolutely fantastic feature for those like me that maybe crash the program so often that we have counters for it in Twitch chat. Note about this is that Sammy will detect three crashes in a 30 second period. And if it detects multiple crashes in that time frame, it will automatically turn off the auto restart to open the program back up. This just keeps the program from entering an infinite loop where it crashes, opens, crashes, opens over and over again and kind of soft locks your computer. In here in the settings, if you don't want that feature turned on, you would just tick it off here. If you leave it on and there's a situation that arises where you get caught in a loop, it will turn itself off. This will not fix an issue that if you open the program, it crashes. It will just keep it from happening an infinite number of times. 
While we're in the settings, you also see a language option here. This is a brand new addition to Sami. We currently have four languages now available uh, for the program. We have English, UK English, Dutch, and Spanish. So let's say that we wanted to choose Dutch, hit save, the program will restart on its own, and then boom. So now all of the information held for the program, not just the stuff that I've made here that I've labeled in English, but the actual program buttons, and I believe the commands as well. Yes, so searching through um, your commands here are also going to be in, no, okay. Well, these are still in English, um, but if you need to be able to read information through the program as a non-native English speaker or reader, you now have those options with further languages being uh, coming down the pipeline. I'm going to change back to English here because I, I can't actually read any of this. There we go, and reload. There are so many more new features that came along with the release of Sammy. Again, I just don't have the time to go through every single thing. Lots of new commands have been added that we'll need time to delve into. Some may even need their own dedicated videos for. Um, but please, again, take the opportunity to go through the patch notes, read up on it, try out some of these new commands, and I'll have videos coming out for them as soon as I can. If you like this content, again, do not forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and comment down below what your favorite dog food is if you don't have any questions because I need engagement. <laughs> um, don't forget I stream three days a week, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays where currently I'm working on a turn-based RPG that's played through Twitch chat. I'm not building it inside Sammy, but again, we do lots of interactive Twitch stuff um, both on YouTube and on Twitch. So come on over there and see what we've got going on. Uh, reminder that I will be changing all of the Leon board referenced materials on the channel over to Sammy reference materials with Leon board, uh, with the learn to Leon board two series being renamed streaming with Sammy. So, um, everything that I've done on those videos is still going to be a hundred percent applicable to Sammy. So don't worry about those videos being outdated, irrelevant, anything like that. You can still go through them and use them in this program just as you were using before. Um, I personally would like to thank the devs who put an amazing amount of time and work into this update. Thank y'all so much. I cannot wait to see what's coming around the corner. And if you can, hop into the Sammy Discord where we, continue, where we can continue conversations there. Don't forget to stay safe, stay hydrated, and we'll see y'all in the next video.